the last Pokemon games for the now classic Nintendo 3DS console hit the market with the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon. Not only Mega Evolutions would make a comeback, but also C moves would be introduced, as well as the largest selection of Pokemon to date, including the iconic Ultra Beasts. In this video you'll discover the secrets, easter eggs and unused content of Pokemon Sun and Moon, as well as Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Welcome to the Pokemon Sun and Moon Iceberg. Say my name. Eisenberg, you're goddamn right. Pokemon Stars A couple of weeks ago, we got the news of Pokemon Legends Z2A, but what about Pokemon Stars? I wonder if we'll have to wait another 11 years for its release. It's hard to tell, as Sun and Moon did get more complete versions with their retelling in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Nonetheless, considering there have been more than two Kanto remakes, it might be that in a couple of years we'll get to explore a vaster Alola region and more Z moves to choose from. Pokemon Walking Animations Believe it or not, there are walking animations for every single Pokemon at the time. If Heart Gold and Soul Silver did a great job, I think Sun and Moon also did great with these walking and running animations. Even Mega Evolutions have these animations. However, I'm not sure why they weren't implemented in the final release if they were basically complete. Here are some of the most remarkable animations. Eight hundred seven Pokemon. It's been almost seven years since the release of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and that marked the very last time in which a Pokemon game allowed the player to use every single available Pokemon at the time. With a total of 807 Pokemon, basically double the amount that Scarlet and Violet have to offer. I guess it's understandable that with 1025 Pokemon and counting, Game Freak has to save resources in order to model every single Pokemon. But so it is when fans complain about some of their favorite Pokemon sitting in a storage system waiting for a Pokemon game to be released where they can use them. I don't want to be negative, but do you think Ultra Sun and Moon were the last games ever to give us the chance to choose all Pokemon in the national decks? Type Full as I explained in my black and white iceberg, the Ether Foundation came up with the Beast Killer project, in which they would create a Pokemon capable of taking down Ultra Beasts. The product of this project would be known as Type Fall, also known as Seal Valley. In order to do so, the Ether Foundation would visit the Canalive Library in the Sinnoh region to learn about Arceus, as replicating something similar with its powers would for sure defeat the Ultra Beasts. Silvalli's ability Arceus system that allows it to change type depending on the memory it's holding is analogous to Arceus's plates. However, when the Arceus system was implemented in this Pokemon, they went berserk, forcing the foundation to put control masks on them to restrain their power and put them into permanent cryogenic stasis. Ultra Necrozma Silhouette it's not quite evident, but if you hold the two covers of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon together, you can actually see Ultra Necrozma's face. Just a small nice detail. Alolan Executor 97 People might think that Alolan Exeggutor is a recent Pokemon, but back in 97 there was a depiction of Exeggutor with an extremely long neck. Even a manki is seen climbing its neck. Iwata Save Pokemon If you happen to have a Pokemon from the Virtual Console version of Pokemon Silver in your team, Morimoto at the Game Freak office will tell you how thanks to Iwata's contribution, the second generation of Pokemon games came to be the way we know them. 
There's one of the biggest misconceptions about the franchise, and that is that Iwata made a program capable of fitting in the Kanto region, but the reality is that Iwata's program took up even more space, so what it really did was speeding up the game. Alolan Pokemon and the Past Alolan Raichu Executor in Marowak reference past Pokemon. As Alolan Marowak takes its ghost type from Ghost in Lavender Town, Raichu from the surfing Pikachu in Pokemon Stadium, and Alolan Executor, as we saw before, from the Pokemon Jungle Booster Box. Santa Claus in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, upon entering the room directly north of the front door, there is a chance encounter with a Delibird, who briefly comes down the chimney and into the fireplace before disappearing into the chimney again, making an allusion to Santa Claus. Would you like to join Team Rocket? There's a clear reference to the iconic Nugget Bridge from Kanto in the Alola region. This golden bridge at Mali Garden is guarded by five trainers you need to fight that have the exact same Pokémon as those trainers from Kanto. At the end of the bridge, you'll be asked if you would like to join Team Rocket. The man ends up saying it's all a joke, as he states that Team Rocket disbanded some time ago. However, the fact that he asks himself how old Giovanni is doing is a hint that maybe he actually belonged to Team Rocket, as it wasn't common knowledge that Giovanni was the boss of the criminal organization. Professor Oak wants to battle while Professor Oak doesn't appear in these games, this entry refers to the fact that Professor Kukui is the final opponent to face in the Alola Pokemon League, same as Professor Oak, who was intended to be the last trainer to be battled, with Pokemon at a higher level than the rivals. Pokemon Sun and Moon, as well as Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, are filled with references to Kanto, probably due to the later releases of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. The Ditto 5 there's a curious event in which a police officer at the police station can't speak, and turns out to be a Ditto in disguise. Then, another police officer explains it might be one of the Ditto 5, a group of Ditto that love humans so much that they transform into humans. These Ditto have competitive natures, and once you catch them, the police officer will thank you for your help and ask you, what if Ditto that can fully understand human minds appeared? After that, the camera zooms in another police officer who replies, maybe. People near you may have been swapped with Ditto without you knowing, haha. <laughs> Finally, the camera zooms in even further, I wonder why. Donald Trump it was almost unavoidable not to think about Donald Trump while seeing Youngus and Gumshoes, especially when back in 2016 this businessman was running for president of the United States. However, Shigeru Amori stated that the resemblance was completely unintentional. GS Ball the GS Ball was an event key item necessary to unlock the Celebi event in Pokemon Crystal. Never had it been mentioned in any core series game until Ultra Sun and Moon. There's an old man who will talk about Kurt and the GS Ball. This random easter egg can be explained with the release of the virtual console version of Pokemon Crystal for the new Nintendo 3DS. Mario's Outfit at the apparel shop of Hawali City, if you go to the right, you will find Mario's outfit, just a small easter egg. Professor Burnett didn't debut in Sun and Moon. You might think that Professor Burnett made her debut in Pokemon Sun and Moon, but in reality, her first appearance dates back to 2012 on Pokemon Radar. This is similar to Brigitte's case, as she didn't debut in Pokemon Bank, but 10 years before, back in 2003 in Pokemon Box Ruby and Sapphire. First anime episode reference in the same way Ash protected Pikachu from a flock of Spiro in the first episode of the Pokemon anime, the protagonist protects Cosmog from this bird Pokemon shortly before releasing its real power and defeat the Spiros. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Reference
If you go to Route 15, you'll find the Either House. In the room on the left, you'll find a book where you can do a personality test that will tell you which Pokemon you are. This is a reference to the Mystery Dungeon games, in which you need to go through a personality quiz in order to find out which Pokemon you'll play as. Nurse Joy complains. If you go to Mali City and speak to the man at the cafe, a cutscene will trigger in which Nurse Joy will sit by your side to take a break and confess how tiresome her work is. A small easter egg to thank the nurses who take care of our Pokemon. Pikachu Wedding there was a lot of discussion talking about marriage between people and Pokemon, but did you know there's a wedding between two Pikachu? If you go to the Hano Grand Resort, there's a little boy who invites you to a wedding of two Pikachu. Although it's just a play wedding, it's funny to watch this Pokemon playing along these little kids. Meowth, Meowth or Meowth You know how difficult it is to choose a starter? Well, each Kahuna has a duty to give trial goers a starter Pokemon. If you live in Melamele Island, you will get to choose between Rowlet, Litten, and Poplio. But what happens if you have the misfortune of living on Ula Ula Island? Well, Island Kahuna Nanu will make you choose between a wide variety of starters. Meowth, Meowth, and Meowth. And while each Meowth being from different regions would have been an awesome idea, Nanu is a supporter of product patriotism, as all Meowth are Alolan. Let me know in the comments which Alolan Meowth would you go for, and why. Chased by Blossom If you go to the second floor of the Tight Song Hotel, you will find a girl with a comfy and a Blossom doing a rehearsal of some sort. However, once the girl realizes you're there, she'll say, it is our fate that no one must see us. After that, you'll be cutely chased out of the room by Blossom. However, for some reason, you'll find an orange berry in your hand. Probably Blossom gave it to you as thank you for not invading other people's privacy. Staring Contest what do you do when you're trying to win a staring contest against an opponent with no eyes? Probably you lose, and this is what happens with a stubborn Stormy that won't move an inch until it loses. The only way to win an unwinnable fight is by using Tickle to make the eyeless Pokemon lose the contest and go home. Mukio and Mukiet Mukio is gazing sadly out over the ocean waves, looking for her beloved Mukiet. A young hero crosses the land to help Mukio find Mukiet. After an exhausting adventure, the hero comes across Mukiet and proceeds to reunite the two. This is the original story of Mukio and Mukiet, that in spite of an apparent happy ending, they get separated by an evildoer. For real, this is a silly yet quite sad story of two Pokemon that love each other, but somehow end up separated. If you love him, let him go. Do you remember the man who oversees the Pokepelago? He happens to be Lusamin's husband and Lily's and Gladion's father. He's the very person who discovered Ultra Worms and Ultra Beasts. However, while conducting an experiment, he vanished into one of these portals. While it's never explained how he ended up on the Pokepelago, it's clear that he lost his memory, as evident in an event that triggers at the Either Foundation after the player defeats Gladion at the Pokemon League. Mon shows up and speaks to Lusamin about Pokemon conservation. Lusamin asks her husband if it's his first time at the Ether Foundation. Since he replies it is, she confirms that he lost his memory. Instead of revealing the truth, she bids him farewell. Gladion asks her mother if she's sure about what she did, and she replies in the affirmative, highlighting the lovely way he now smiles. This implies that, while he was a top scientist, he wasn't as happy as he is at the Pokepelago, living a simple peaceful life on the islands connected with nature, a bittersweet ending to their love story. Ash in the Core Series Games there are a couple of references to the now Pokemon champion Ash Ketchum in Generation 7. In the special demo version of Pokemon Sun and Moon, the player Sun receives an unsigned letter from somebody implied to be Ash. Included with this letter is a Greninja, with Ash being listed as its original trainer. Like in the anime, Ash's Greninja can transform into Ash Greninja by using Battle Bond. 
On the west side outside the resort in Heia Heia City, there's a celebrity Pikachu. Judging by how famous this Pokemon is, it immediately makes you think of Ash's Pikachu. On top of that, we have the distribution of Cap Pikachus, special Pokemon that wear Ash's hats throughout the anime. It makes me wonder if at some point, Ash Ketchum, in the same fashion as Red, will be encountered as a secret final boss in a future Pokemon game. The Alolan King's Secret you can find Ace Rolla at the Mali Library, where she'll tell you about a secret book hidden somewhere in that place. After solving a puzzle, you'll read a note written by a king of ancient time who wrote the following. The Pillager of Light descended from the sky and shrouded the world in darkness. The Pillager took from us the beast that calls the moon, using the beast as its dawn wings. A youth and the gardens together used the stones to summon the light once more. The beast that calls the moon was spotted from the Pillager of Light, and the darkness was banished from Alola. Unused Gym There's an unused gym battle background model that goes unused in both Pokemon Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, possibly intended to be used in the Cantonian gym in Mali City in the latter. Criminal Hypnos as if Hypno's reputation weren't enough, we have a group of three Hypno at the police station, accused of stealing a nugget from Captain Elima's house. He was on vacation, but then returned to his house and found his Machamp passed out. After you solve a puzzle, Elima realizes that they stole the nugget in order to make better pendulums. He allowed the group of Hypno to take the nugget and make better pendulums to channel their hypnotic power more effectively. What for? I have no idea. Morse code message. If we go to Hokulani Observatory, there's a magnemite that's trying to say something. If every boop is considered a dot and every B a dash, this translates to a Lola in Morse code. Classic Game Boy Battle. After becoming the champion, if you go home and speak to Meowth, it will trigger an event in which a neighbor pays a visit to your mother and fights with her Alolan Meowth with your mother's Cantonian Meowth. What's interesting is that the battle happens in the style of Pokemon Red and Blue, as the battle is barely animated. Your mom was famous. At the end of the classic Game Boy Battle event, we discovered that back in Kanto, your mom was known as the Scratch Cat Girl, referring to how skilled she is when it comes to using Meowth in battle. The neighbor actually calls her the infamous Scratch Cat Girl of Kanto. Debug Build Another interesting element that came with the Jigalik was this debug build of Pokemon Ultra Sun. It has a lot of options to experiment with, but it's difficult to access to many of its features without it crashing. Forever Young this is a small but funny detail about a side quest in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. If you go to the Tide Song Hotel, there's an old man in his room who will ask you to help him reunite with his friends from 30 years ago. Judging by his age, you would expect his friends to be around his age, and they are. But there's a beauty trainer that doesn't look like she belongs there. She'll say, oh shish you guys. Where have you all gone off to? It's been 30 years, how am I supposed to know where you would go to meet now? Once they reunite, the old man will tell the young looking girl, you look younger now than you did back then, she replies. And it's not easy I'll have you know. I've been using that Marini treatment, a touch of that poison spike to your face and... Well, considering that Lusamine is over 40 years old, maybe it's no surprise that this beauty trainer is an old person in reality. As if we hadn't had enough, if you speak to the girl once again, she'll say that she's about to get married for the sixth time. Arabella You definitely remember Arabella from the Viridian Gym in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Well, he's referenced in the seventh generation of Pokemon games, when the player finds a letter in a washed up bottle on Ula Ula Beach. He basically asks whoever finds the letter to deliver it to a guy at Mali City Escape. He explains that he's a trainer from Kanto that has been checking on his training. Nothing more, nothing less. Spaceman 
An amnesiac man can be found in Haina Desert after becoming the champion. If you have Soul Rock or Lunaton, depending on the version, he will regain his memories and mention that he first encountered the Pokemon shown to him 30 years earlier, and that the star pulses it bestowed upon him have been passed down to a group of wonderful men. This is likely a reference to the old guys and the old powers they give to the player in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Shortly after, the man will ascend to space, a city where he says he comes from. This is by far one of the weirdest events in Pokemon. Unused music there are a couple of interesting themes. One of them is an early boss battle theme, which honestly sounds like an alternative version of the Elite Four theme. This was played at Japan Expo 2016 by Junichi Masuda, stating that this would never be played again, probably knowing that it would later become the Elite Four theme we all are familiar with. Another theme which was also present in the data of Pokemon X and Y is a remix of the Kanto Champion theme. Take a listen. You made Giovanni show up in Pokemon Go. When defeating Giovanni in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, the boss of Team Rocket departs to another dimension, not before asking himself, now, what new world shall I unleash my evil schemes upon? At the end of a promotional trailer for Team Go Rocket, a silhouette of Giovanni is shown with the words, Earth is where I shall unleash my evil schemes next. This means that the Giovanni we defeat in the Rainbow Rocket episode is the same that appears in Pokemon Go. Make Harambe a Pokemon Harambe deserves to live on forever in our hearts. Support this petition if you want Harambe to become a Pokemon. As you know, there was an incident in which a western lowland gorilla was passed away for fear that it harmed a three-year-old boy who fell into the gorilla's enclosure. This gorilla became very popular on the internet due to the unfairness of its fate, as the vast majority considers that Harambe's intentions weren't at all harming the kid. Left Pokeball this entry reminds me of the Anistar City Old Man. If you go to the Ether Foundation, there's a receptionist that will explain what happens to Pokemon if their trainer passes away. Either they give them to a relative of the original trainer or set them free from their PC boxes. This girl will give you a Pokeball with a Dartrix that refuses to go back to the wild. She asks you to give it to somebody to take care of it. If you go to Malice City, you will find the daughter and granddaughter of the deceased man who will be able to take care of Dartrix. Ultra Space Oddities as explained by Kemper Liam at the Pewter City Gym, light years is on time, it measures distance. When it comes to traveling through ultra space, we're able to put this explanation to the test. Even though we don't really travel that distance, the warp holes that we go through do take us light years from Earth. To understand what a light year is, it's simply the distance that light travels in a year in a vacuum, that is, almost 6 trillion miles, or 10 trillion kilometers. That kid was sure right about Brock being light years from you, if you chose Pikachu as your starter. I was trying to find what the world record in light years is for these games, and I found a Reddit user who reached a place 7045 light years away from Earth. That means that whatever Pokemon this player found, it was more than 41 quadrillion miles from Earth. 
How is it possible that a Pokemon from Earth can be found in these unfathomably distant worlds? Are Pokemon meant to exist across the universe in the same shape? Or did the Ether Foundation mess up really badly with their experiments, and they ended up sending innocent Pokemon to perish in the most isolated corners of the galaxy? There are several explanations to this. The first one is that Pokemon just happen to exist in the same form anywhere in the galaxy or even the universe, as if their biology was dictated by some obscure natural law present anywhere in the universe. The second is that, as I mentioned, the Ether Foundation performed unethical and cruel experiments with certain Pokemon, and accidentally or not, ended up sending a single Pokemon to these faraway worlds, only for the player to find them through these portals and save them from loneliness and eventual death. There's a third theory, and probably the craziest, but it's been discussed in astrophysics. There's a possibility that an infinite universe, and consequently with infinite possibilities, somewhere far away, a world almost exactly like ours is bound to exist. Oddly enough, this is supported by the fact that the Ultra Ruin, the place where we can find Goslord, happens to be an alternative version of Hawali City. And yet, in order to get there, we need to travel a certain amount of light years. Maybe it sounds crazy, but it's very likely that this is the case. Trainer School Mysteries After speaking to a youngster on Big Way Beach and after Hala's grand trial, if the player visits the school at night, they will find a little girl and a Drifloon. This girl will ask the player to solve some mysteries that go as follows. Scary Lights at night, near burning place, scary lights show up and wander, burning. Someone burning and crying, you hear a girl's voice. Youth athlete Didra is using the incinerator to burn love letters she wrote to a crush who is now in a relationship with someone else. She decided to burn them late at night so nobody would notice. When the player notices her doing this, she challenged them to a battle. Lord Slimy At night, you hear strange sound. Slimy. Slimy getting close. Footsteps of Lord Slimy. If you're found, Lord Slimy swallow you. You're gone. Once they reach the third floor, the player hears Lord Slimy's footsteps coming up the stairs and has to hide. They hide in a locker, but are found by the janitor's grandson and the cleaning grimer Grimo. Grimo has to clean the lockers, so has the janitor's grandson help him, since Grimo cannot open the lockers. Grimo works late at night to clean more than his rival Grimy. Scary PA System At night, Teacher's Lounge, second floor. You hear broadcasts from beyond grave. You're done for it if you hear it. You can't leave, it's over for you. As the player walks towards the door, they hear a broadcast over the PA system, telling them that they cannot get out. When they approach the door, a man with his low poke appears. The man tells the player that the speaker was broken, so he had to fix it. However, his low poke fell asleep in front of the door and he couldn't get out. Stairs to Nowhere Night, stairs, cursed. You go up and up, but still same place. You can't go down either. Circle, circle, can't go back. Once they reach the second floor, the player feels a cold breeze. Even if they go up or down the stairs, they remain on the second floor. If the player goes to the west side of the floor, they notice the bulletin board. One piece of paper has black stains on it, which indicates the lower left, upper left, lower right, then upper right corner. If the player steps on the sparkles on the floor in these corners of the second floor in that order, they can use the stairs again. When proceeding to the first floor, they are immediately attacked by a wild ghastly. Cursed Diary It appears on the shelf, third floor. Keep reading and scary things happen. If you finish reading it, someone take you away. The diary tells a story of someone who bought a seemingly haunted house. They would hear a constant scratching sound, which the player then hears. The owner would also see something moving in the house. After finishing the diary, the lights suddenly go out, and the player is attacked by a wild Drifloon. After completing the battle with Drifloon, the player reads the rest of the diary and discovers that it is in fact a horror fiction novel written in diary format. Ghost's Glass at night, classroom, second floor. You hear laughter. Ghosts are taking a class too. Everyone says so. When the player enters the classroom, there is a teacher and students in the room. 
Many of the students tell the player to join them and be their friend. If the player interacts with the teacher, she is revealed to actually be a hypno creating an illusion, who then flees and disappears. The students, also part of hypno's illusion, also vanish. After the player solves all six of the offered mysteries, the preschooler tells the player that she moved from a foreign country and didn't speak Alola's language very well. She was sad that her friends were scared by the mysteries, but now that the player has solved them, her friends don't need to be scared, giving the player the wise glasses as thanks. Suddenly, the school security officer calls out to them, questioning why they are at school so late at night. The player talks to the security officer, and the officer tells the player that they were alone when he called out to them. Letter in a Bottle in Iki Town, there's an old lady who speaks about how when she and her brother were children, they used to play on the beach. However, one day her brother disappeared without a trace. Well, if you go to Kalais Bay, you'll find an old letter from her brother. He mentions that he ended up in a strange place like nothing he'd ever seen before. He tells her sister not to worry about him, as he's fine and everyone is very nice to him. Despite her loss, she mentions she's happy to know that her brother is alive and happy. This is very odd. How is it that the boy ended up in a place like he never saw before? Judging by the fact he disappeared under mysterious circumstances, I'm pretty sure he ended up dragged by an ultra wormhole into another dimension. But what about those who treat him nicely? Is he talking about people? Or probably ultra beasts? This doesn't explain how he was able to write the letter and throw it into the sea, but the way he mysteriously ends up in this strange place still makes me think he ended up in another dimension. Happy, but far, far away. The Dark Fate of the Pokémon Friends Thank you so much for watching, please consider giving my video a thumbs up so I have the chance to be discovered by more people. Don't forget to subscribe for content like this and have an amazing day. See you in the next one.